Week 7 of The Greatest Showdown is upon us, and we're playing A12, a skilled player who's been around just about as long as I have. His team embodies momentum, as 8 out of 8 of his top mons have excellent pivoting bulk paired with U-turn or flip turn. Couple that with good speed and strong revenging options, and you have a recipe for winning. Despite this, A12 has had quite an unlucky season thus far. Will we be just as lucky as his previous opponents, or will we fall to turn turn the team? Let's find out. Great Tusk often finds itself capable of breaking through opposing teams using its high attack and near perfect move pool. However, there are some matchups that require Tusk to strap on a helmet and get to walling. This is one of them. We'll be looking to punish A12's repeated use of U-turn and try to weaken his members into range of Earthquake, Knockoff, or Ice Spinner. Alamomola is annoying, but removing its item will be a net positive on the way the game plays out. Rapid Spin is on here strictly for Gliscor's hazards, but being faster than some of A12's offense once at plus one could result in some increased difficulty for switching around Tusk. All right, this is the craziest wheezing set I think I've ever Ever brought to a game but it just works here as you can see we're brave natured with a nearly completely mixed defensive spread this is to facilitate this mon's job this week sweeping that's right we're using curse rest talk gyro ball galarian wheezing i probably look crazy running this but as you can see a lot of a12's offense is physical or in pheasantipity's case outright dies to plus two plus two gyro ball rest talk allows me to use gyro ball without burning through its very limited pp and if I can get this thing going, it just about wins. Porygon 2 is here this week because our opponent has some very annoying special attackers such as Zoroark, Terra Executor, and even Cyclozar. I need something to eat the attacks that can actually kill Weezing on the off chance I decide to set up earlier than expected. We're also running Minspeed Sassy so as to be slower than any flip turn Alamomola as that would result in analytic boosted tri attacks and ice beams hitting hard into A12's limited switch ins. Foul play is teched on specifically to hit Zoroark and SD Cinderace harder than any other move. Terra Fairy was the the first Terra type we brought on our Chalodon this season, and it's making a return here. This should be pretty obvious, but Urshifu can get out of hand very fast, and if it's the right Terra type, it can even beat Weezing. Fortunately, unless it's exactly Steel, which our Tusk messes up, it'll be checked by either Weezing or this Arch. We're running lefties and a slightly less conventional set for attacks. That's right, no rocks this week. Instead, we're bringing Dragon Pulse, Flash Cannon, Thunderbolt, and the all-powerful Electro Shot. Boosting our special attack on the switch to Gliscor or Alamomola is great for us as it allows us to break through those walls and open up the next member. Weakness Policy Iron Boulder. Now this may look strange as getting off the weakness policy means I'll almost certainly be in range of Jet Punch or Sucker Punch, but trust me, there's a method to this madness. We've got enough speed for Ace and Cyclozar and are quite bulky with enough defense to live a Jet Punch from full. Mighty Cleave is obvious, but we have a less often seen move here in Wild Charge. This is because as Alan Mola is liable to trigger our policy with a simple scald and assuming no burn coupled with a swords dance, Wild Charge should then pick off the aloe from there. And lastly, the linchpin of the set, Quick Attack lets us make one final push for damage with Boulder before going down to the opposition's priority moves. It also has the added benefit of dodging Sucker Punch. And finally, the enabler, Raikou. Primarily physically defensive while still outspeeding Zoroark, our light clay Raikou aims to make it difficult for A12 to pick up KOs he planned to get easily. Volt Switch allows us to trigger policy on Boulder unexpectedly, stamina on Archalanon, or soak up a hit with Tusk. And Scald covers Gliscor, of course. There isn't much more to say here, so let's just see how this plan came together. So I'm not super confident in the team that I'm bringing today, but I would still like to win today because that allows me to bring not real prep next week against the number one seed in the league, Zooch. So hopefully we can win today, but let's see what A12 brings for us. Okay, so the Terra on Urshifu is psychic. I guess that kind of breaks Weezing apart. All right, well, we'll see. Um, there is an executor. I'm going to have to be careful of that. It is Terra. The Terra on the Eggy is fighting. Okay, that's kind of what I expected. I expected Electric Ursh plus fighting on the uh, on the Eggy if it did come. We're probably just going to lead Raikou. He didn't bring his ground type, so it's free Volt Switches. So we are going to lead Raikou. Allo leads. Yeah, we just go for a light screen here. That is a flip turn. That's fine. That's a crit. <laughs> Zooch is already complaining in the chat about the crit. It's fine. It's an okay crit. Okay, so we see the Urshifu come in. This could be the Zoroark. Uh, I do think I just Volt Switch on this. If it is the Zoroark, then that's really dumb because I have a light screen up. 
Uh, and if it's the Urshifu, then I just Volt Switch and probably just go into Tusk. Terra Psychic makes a lot of sense because it covers Tusk and Weezing, but my Tusk is mainly physically defensive. So I am just gonna Volt Switch here. I'm gonna get off a very nice 36%. Let's actually check how much that did. So he does have a little bit of bulk. We can honestly just go into, he didn't Terra this turn. If he would have Terra, then I would have seen it. So we can go Tusk and then pull the double into our Chaladon if we really want to, on like the Zen Headbutt, which is probably what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go Tusk. There's Swords Dance, and this is probably going to be the Psychic move coming out. I don't think I die, even from Adamant, like, Life Orb. Zen at plus two Life Orb does 83 max. So I can hit Earthquake here, get off 42% max <laughs> into this thing, which isn't great. That's not a great amount. I could double the Arch Aladon. I could also spin, and then Earthquake at the following turn. So if he hits into my helmet, spin plus EQ will kill him. So that's what we're playing for. We're going to go for Rapid Spin. Here's the Terra Psychic. Terra Blast. Not enough to KO me. We're gonna get off a rapid spin. And that did more than I anticipated to the point where Sucker Punch could KO me here if he has it. So we're gonna go for knockoff. And he does not have Sucker Punch. And that's a Lumberry. And there's Trailblaze. Okay, and he dies to the helmet. Awesome. Cool. Okay, so this is just Raikou again. That ended up working out great. We wasted his Terra as well, which means the Eggy cannot Terra. Here's Raikou. And on this thing, I'm just gonna get up a Reflect. I'm not even going to bother Volting because no shot the Eggy doesn't come in here. An Executor can never hit our Chaladon anymore. Now we could see the Cinderace come in and Core Change. That is an option, but I don't think that matters. And I'm actually in a really good position to uh, try to win this with... We're going to go for Scald here and see if he has Quart. Because if he changes typings with Core Change, he no longer has Stab on like a fighting move. I could go Weezing and start setting up. I'm just worried about the Zoroark. So I'm just going to Volt. There's the Core Change. Okay, so he turns into a normal type. He gets my screens, but they're not for that long. So, we go Porygon too. Porygon's not terrible. Arch seems pretty free, man. Just keep it as a Steel Dragon and then, yeah, just hit like Electro Shot here. Yeah, I think that's what I do. I think I go Arch Aladon, but I think I do just click Electro Shot. Yeah, I think that's fine. Here's the Aloe. So our special attack's gonna go up. Hopefully he's not Mirror Coat. That would suck. Although I don't think he actually kills me. Oh, that is Zoroark. Okay. So we're gonna get off a lot of damage there. And if that is choiced, we actually KO here. So I think I can Terra and just go for Flash Cannon. That's a huge miss. Dragon Pulse is better, right? Dragon Pulse is better. There's another Focus miss, unfortunate. And there goes the Zoroark, so that's not a problem anymore. And we are plus one Arch Aladon with Flash Cannon, with Dragon Pulse, and with Thunderbolt. So his team is threatened heavily. He also has nothing super effective for me. Here's the Alum. So we're gonna go for the, this plus one Thunderbolt KO, if this thing is AV. So 62 to 74, Electro Shot does not KO, even less so if it has like a bunch of spit F. But we already know that this thing has a lot of Fizz Death. So I'm actually just gonna Flash Cannon here, funny enough. It's cause I don't wanna fall for Mirror Coat. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, cool. And now, now that he took 16 from Flash Cannon. Electro Shot still doesn't kill. I could Flash Cannon again as well because Mirror Coat will not KO me. And then we could, well, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Electro Shot does KO because I go up to plus two. 88, yeah, I just Electro Shot here. There's a flip turn, okay. My defense goes up again. We should be outspeeding Executor. It shouldn't be like super fast or anything. And with my defense at plus two, he can't break me right now. Yeah, that focus miss was huge, honestly. Yeah, we just go for Electro Shot here. The Cinderace should die. Sunny day, okay, so he's gonna get the uh, the speed boost on his executor. Still shouldn't be able to beat Porygon. He also has to kill this first, which means he can't afford to set up, I don't believe. That is just a solar beam, that is death. We do see a life orb, and now we are going to go into Porygon 2, and we are just going to go for the, I think ice beam is the best play here. So he's gonna solar beam. It's gonna do a lot, not enough though. And we are just going to Ice Beam here. And then we're just going to go for Recover. And here's Palafin. Uh, and now I'm going to click Recover again. Because there's no reason not to. In comes Alamomola. This thing probably flip turns, but I can just try attack here. This is free. Something has to take this hit. And it's going to be Palafin. Takes 40. Doesn't get status. I'm going to Recover again. Scouting for close combat, exactly. And now at this point, the sun is dead, so we can just try attack. It's completely free. Let's try attack. No status, that's fine. Uh, and we are just going to go for it again. Chip away at the aloe, try to get status. Mirror coat comes out, we can just recover. 
That's fine. Uh, and now at this point, knowing the Allo's moves, I think uh, Weezing just walls and beats it. So we're going to recover again. Here's the flip turn. Crits me. That's fine. Here's Allo. Get off a recover. Uh, if I go hard Raikou, it's always bad for me. I'd rather this die, actually, because this thing is at 7. Uh, and I'm just going to try attack again. As in comes Palafin, has to take another try attack. Takes a shit ton. And we just attempt to recover. This is a close combat turn. That's fine. And then we just go into Raikou, who easily lives Jet Punch from here. Uh, and we just Volt Switch, I think. We can even Scald, honestly. But yeah, I think Volt Switch is correct. Uh, yep. So we go this. Uh, alternatively, I can Light Screen, because even Choice Banded... Hold on, let me see. Plus one, 252 attack. Uh, Adamant. Close combat to my Raikou does... Okay, if he's, if he's banded, he does KO. I can check based on Porygon, right? Porygon would have taken 109 from Bandit, so he's not banded. So I can actually easily reflect here. Yeah. Let's go for the reflect, go for the light screen. And I think at this point, uh, Boulder wins. Light screen, play rough, comes out. Uh, and now we just go for Scald. Nice. Burned. Beautiful. There's the mirror coat. No problemo. Uh, we're going to go hard boulder here, I think. Yeah, hard boulder. Flip turn triggers weakness policy, and that should be game over. In comes Palafin. The uh, jet punch does not KO me. So we mighty cleave. In comes Aloe, we SD again on this. There's the flip turn, now we quick attack. Because quick attack at plus four should always KO this, even if it's max HP. Quick attack does 27, yeah. Unless he's like max defense, he does not live this. So, bye bye Palafin. This should be good game. And even if this doesn't kill Allo, Raikou will. There's the QA. Killing off the Palafin. And now we click Mighty Cleave. Aqua Jet does no damage, and Mighty Cleave is going to pick up the KO. Actually, the burn is funny enough, so that's Raikou's kill. Sorry for focus miss. That changed the game a lot. That definitely changed the game entirely. It basically lost him the game from that point on because it was so hard to deal with our Chalodon, and uh, yeah, unfortunate. But it's it's the way it happens sometimes. I've lost games to hacks multiple times within the last two months, as you guys will know, uh, especially in the BBR. So it, it happens to everybody. Uh, obviously, he's going to be frustrated. I'm not because I won, but... That's how this game goes. Welcome to Pokemon. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to go and check out my opponent uh, in the description down below. His link is there, as well as all the other coaches in the TGS this season, if you are interested in their content. But if you are interested in ours, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I thank you so much once again for watching the video, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.